John Griffin, the longtime CNN producer fired last month over child allegations has been named in a Connecticut civil lawsuit alleging despicable acts of horrific sexual abuse and exploitation. John Griffin had a cush job as a producer for CNN for almost a decade. His social media had regular postings of his travel and behind the scenes work. He produced shows for famed former CNN anchor Chris Cuomo and was invited to work some of the world's biggest events. But on Friday, December 10th, 2021, all of his professional achievements would be tainted. The world would know his name, now robed in infamy, as the CNN producer was arrested that day on charges for attempting to persuade minors to engage in unlawful sexual activity. But something seems more afoot here, such as the timing it took to arrest John Griffin, the connections he has, and also the amount of money he has as a producer. I have a lot of questions, and I know you will too. With that being said, hold on to your butts, secure your wigs, stay right there. We're going to go through it. In the summer of 2020, Griffin transferred $3,000 to a mother for her and her nine-year-old daughter to fly to Logan Airport in Boston, Massachusetts. He would then pick them up and drive them to his Vermont ski house. A lawsuit was filed by his nine-year-old victim, Jane Doe, for personal injuries, including emotional distress caused by horrific sexual abuse, exploitation, and assault by the plaintiff, John Griffin. For several years prior to 2020, CNN's former producer, John Griffin, solicited young girls, including nine-year-old Jane Doe, for the purpose of knowingly persuading, inducing, enticing, and coercing them to engage in sexual activity, exploitation, and or trafficking. In the course of his intentional campaign of abuse, CNN's former John Griffin engaged in communications with the parents of the little girls for the purpose of engaging them in sexual exploitation, including being trapped by him. Evidence in Exhibit 1 would suggest that he would meet parents on paid membership site called alt.com, described as, quote, BDSM fetish and kink site where members find alternative BDSM bondage and fetish partners. John Griffin used alt.com to seek women who were, in Griffin's words, sexually submissive and open-minded. His user handle on that site was admit underscore it on several occasions in 2019 and 2020 john griffin communicated with people he encountered on alt.com using other communication platforms including keek and google hangouts during those chat conversations he stated that he believed there is a quote wanton at the core of any female and that quote a woman is a woman regardless of her age. During these chat conversations, CNN's former producer, John Griffin, espoused a way of life in which women are simply subservient and inferior to men. He sought parents who would allow him to train their daughters to be directly quoting the lawsuit. During these egregious communications with the parents, he bragged about training girls as young as seven years old and made other disturbing statements such as quote one of the big lies of this society is that women are delicate innocent angels and they are in actuality naturally the dirtiest possible in every metric let me remind you that this cnn producer was telling this to parents another quote is when handled appropriately, a woman is a woman, regardless of her age, and it is your job in concert with me, John Griffin, to see that the girl's name redacted is trained properly. CNN's former producer, John Griffin, sent thousands of dollars to the parents of little girls for the purpose of training them, including nine-year-old Jane Doe. Between April and July of 2020, he allegedly invited three women and their child daughters over for the purpose of training according to the federal indictment cnn's former producer john griffin pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 19.5 years for luring nine-year-old jane doe 
into illegal sexual acts. After 19 years, he'll be followed by 15 years of supervised release. I know the sentencing for nausea inducing egregious crimes makes me absolutely sick as well. For crimes that are committed in America that get harsher punishments, something much more severe feels to be prescribed for such an egregious crime. For what that is, I'll let you use your imagination. Jane Doe was taken away from her monster of a mother and placed in safety of a legal guardian's care. So her mother. So I completely didn't expect to find this part. So I wanted to know to what extent the mother got penalized for her egregious acts against her own daughter, intentionally succumbing her to a week of sexual abuse. That's seven days of sexual abuse by a sick predator. I found out more than what I wanted, but illustrates how nefarious and extreme this wicked woman was with her child. According to publication site VT Digger, the mother allegedly said that she had brought along several toys and use them with Griffin, forcing the child to participate in the adult activities that included B. More digging resulted in me finding out that the mother actually wound up in the hospital that week. Yes, that week of the trip. That week of the trip of her bringing her daughter to the sick predator, she wound up in the hospital somehow. I have no idea how, but if I were to use context clues, it may have been a result of her degenerate sexual activities, thus leaving her little girl alone and unsupervised with producer predator monster, John Griffin. Succumbing her daughter to abuse for however many days she was hospitalized. The little girl told a social worker that she was actually made to watch her mother on several occasions engage with other men in other instances. All these abhorrent details learned about the mother, you know why I was looking forward to discover a grueling sentence somewhere, anywhere, but alas, I was perplexed to not find one easy result simply stating how long she had been sentenced. So this is really sad and it's really sad that I found this piece of information out in the way that I found it. And this is what I wanted to show you. Hey guys, quick little reminder here for you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button because about 70% of you are watching my content but are not subscribed. So go ahead and become a friend here and subscribe. And not only that, for those of you that love my content that regularly watch me, please do me a solid, help me. Grab this share link and put it in your chats. Put it in your uh, group me's, in your Gilded, in your Discord servers, in your Facebook groups, right? In your family chats, in your friend chats, right? Grab this link and help me organically share this content. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we continue. Within my quest to find out how long this woman who I would say would imply to be a danger to society. I made this startling discovery. Pen a con. I learned quickly is a website for incarcerated individuals that are looking for relationships around the world. Yes, you heard that right. The only contextual detail that I could find in theme to this woman's sentence term was found on her dating profile published on Pen a con. Yeah, that should have you scratching your head. Not one article lists this woman's prison sentence for her egregious exploitation of a child, but her dating profile clues us in. Hello, I'm a 50 year old college educated professional woman. Then she goes into her profession and her career. Then here it is. This is my first time in prison. I have four and a half years left and I long for someone to take away my loneliness and make me feel alive again by becoming my friend and perhaps more. You heard that right. So one might assume based on this mentioned detail that the mother was sentenced for child crimes, violating her own daughter. She was only sentenced something under 10 years. I would even be bold to guess that even less than seven years for her disgusting crimes. Even more shady is the fact that once again, there was not one article that I could find. And I searched. I went to page two and page three of Google, okay? 
I could not find one article covering this lady's sentencing for her egregious crimes and exploitation of her own child. Why was this sentencing done so quietly? So hi, this is me mid editing and I gotta say that this part got me grossly curious. What judge in their right mind would give such a lowly sentence to Heather Lynn Carricker, the mother who subjected her nine-year-old child to such egregious, disgusting crimes? And so that had me digging naturally. And I was looking for judges that had a position at Henderson Township Justice Court specifically any that held position within the whole ordeal that happened in 2021 and also giving some cushion for 2022 because the date of or the last clue of Heather Lynn Carricker's sentencing was December of 2021. That would put us at the tail end of that year. So this is basically a quick lookup of what judges currently hold seat. Uh, one position cr uh, right now is currently vacant, but previously held by a man named Sam Bateman, who was sworn in in 2017, left office to become deputy county manager in 2023. The other position is held by Stephen George, who served since 2001 and projected to serve until 2027. The final seat is served by Barbara Shifalakwa, who we will quickly roll out since she was only recently sworn in in January of 2024 as a judge. So keep in mind, again, the latest hearing for Heather Lynn Carricker was reported to have been December of 2021. Now, in my quest to find any stories that would give us context on any of these judges uh, that actually held a position within that time frame, I looked for stories online uh, and there were at least a couple that gave me um, a really a really dark idea of what might be going on at Henderson Township Justice Court. One story in particular talks about a father who is very expressive and disappointed in the court system as he believes in his opinion that th they actually failed his son. So in a nutshell, his son, uh, in the care of his mother, uh, so his mother had custody, I guess, uh, for whatever time, whatever's worked out, right? Um, and as he was in her care, he found drugs underneath her nightstand. He panicked. He went into the bathroom. He FaceTimed his father with heavy breathing and great anxiety told him what was going on the police were called and the body cam footage shows the little boy handing the drugs over to the police now come you know the whole justice system you know that whole thing just in a nutshell is a joke um, now the mother was arrested for drug trafficking and drug abuse as it crossed the bridge of the court system uh, Henderson Justice Court judge Stephen George set a bail at $25,000 for this crime, which the mother long posted that day. Now, as you guys may or may not know, I'm not going to explain or go into heavy detail because I don't want this to be uh, long, but there is a controversy going on with low bail reform in major cities with judges of major cities. And this is a big problem, not just for your safety, not just for crime in general, but it also affects the way that kids are ser served justice in the whole court system uh, with being exploited or abused. So basically, if the criminal is set a low bail, you know, let's say in this case, it's twenty five thousand dollars. The criminal can post 10 percent of that bail and get out. Right. So that's why it's such a big deal. And this is happening in major cities. Once again, it's not just, you know, chi chi you know, uh, mothers who are accused of child abuse, but traffickers, um, you know, child exploiters, every single type of criminal, uh, any category of criminal, they're being awarded these low bail you know, I'm just going to say awards because that's what that's what it is. They're beginning. They're getting awarded with low bails. So that's what happened with this mother. Again, I'll have to go into that in a different video. Maybe this this right here, this little part shows me that there was some sort of knowledgeable work in tandem with these judges, with Judge Stephen George and Judge Sam Bateman at the time when he was seated as as a chief justice. 
It says here, in January of 2023, prosecutors filed a court document stating that Long, the mother, violated bail conditions. Henderson Justice Court, Sam Bateman, Judge Sam Bateman, reminded Long to comply with the family court order records showed, right? And then it also says in February of 2023, prosecutors argued that bail condition violations would be addressed in front of Judge Bateman. So it does seem to be that there is some sort of knowledge of repetitive history with this woman abusing drugs. And, you know, and, and it, the story does go on about multiple times that she was arrested, that she was in, you know, court activities and yet still up until this point, she was still awarded this very low bail, right? So moral of the story, you see two judges of the same court that I question that also mentions the sentence or, or the the court activity of Heather Lynn Carriker, right? The one of the people in our whole story. And they're giving these lenient sentencings. They're giving, you know, um, they're not at least knowledgeable of what's going on. And of course, this story caps off with the parents basically saying that the courts are too lenient and that there are warning signs before the arrest and, you know, that this was even turned, this particular case was even turned into CPS and um, nothing came of it, right? So that's the first story. The next story also involves, you know, some names. Now, this one in particular talks about a woman who is accused of a seventh DUI more than five weeks after her arrest, right? So what this is saying is, you know, this woman basically has been arrested multiple times before, has been arrested for the same crime at consecutive years down the line, and yet still she was awarded this low bail. And you will guess it, the same judges um, kind of appear in this this whole article. It says here, a judge ordered a Las Vegas woman accused of her seventh DUI to be held on a $5,000 bail. That's right. $5,000. And I'm going to give you a math quiz, pop quiz. How much does it take for her to post bail? If you answer 10%, then you are correct. All right. So it says here that records show that it was her seventh DUI charge since 2007. And then it goes into all of these other consecutive charges, right? April 2007, September 2010, 2019, 2020, 2020, right? So you get the idea. This woman is a repeat offender. She gets a $5,000 bail. Now it says here where it does mention a judge's name. It says on October 18th, Henderson District Court Chief Judge Sam Bateman released Reyes Rivero from custody on her own recognizance because prosecutors had not received blood results from the most recent case, Bateman told the court. Now there is video of him basically saying, okay, uh, you can't drive, okay? And then she's like, okay. So then... Again, it mentions another, the, the same judge as the last story. It was not until Monday that Judge Stephen George, who took over the case, set a bail at $5,000. OK, prosecutors argued she should be, you know, she should be set at a higher bail. But no. Um, so this whole thing, again, just reeks. It reeks of a court system that is way too lenient on repetitive criminals but not just repetitive criminals criminals who are a danger to society hence heather lynn Carricker, the mother of this nine-year-old girl who was sold off to john griffin to do the most horrific activities to her horrific crimes to her right violations and you know again this is township justice court in nevada and uh, th this just goes to show that your local politics absolutely matter. And if you are a citizen of Nevada, if you have friends or family that live in that state, specifically around this this county, you know, um, it it's important to know that. It's important to know who is representing your court system, who is making judgments in your area. And there's things like this that are happening in your own backyard. I will be doing more of these because this is very important, you know, that that we know these things. But yeah, uh, it, th this is the part. This is the dark side of the moon that the media did not want to show everybody that they did not want everybody knowing. She then goes into her hobbies in prison, talks about her prayer even. And then I read this garbage. I know I may look innocent, but secretly I am 
quirky, playful, and extremely passionate. I started playing with B at age 23. Write to me for more details. Despite her depraved actions, landing her to the very place she's sentenced to, despite her Pentagon profile, clearly labeled incarcerated for attempted lewdness abuse of underage persons, she clearly hasn't made any changes correcting her course in life and advertises herself within the same theme as she did meeting John Griffin on alt.com. The evidence against Griffin allegedly includes drone video he took showing a quote, completely naked nine-year-old girl standing next to him in his underwear, according to court filings. When confronted with this video during an interview by FBI agents, Griffin's first response was merely to suggest he was not looking at the naked girl, despite that she was standing so close to him to be touching. The prosecutor's pretrial detention memo read, so my curiosity raged on digging into this ordeal as I read through several staggering figures offered by John Griffin in several scenarios. For example, it is noted that he offered several mothers several thousand dollars for their participation in his vile request with their children. Some of his expensive assets are mentioned, such as his $1.4 million Vermont ski house that he drove the mother and child Jane Doe to. In another article, it mentions that his main house is worth $4 million and a yacht that he owned being kept by a marina worker. How is it that John had that much money? Even though a CNN producer, not even they make near enough to keep let alone a $4 million house in Connecticut, but also live lavishly with other million dollar homes and expensive vehicles. Also noted in a completely separate incident, he tried to bribe a driver with a monetary offer after crashing into his car. Federal prosecutors in this child trafficking case cited this to keep him behind bars in fear that he would try to bribe his way out of this situation. Also noted by U.S. Attorney for the District of Vermont, Nicholas Carrest, wrote in a motion, quote, Griffin has tried to deceive, delete, and spend his way out of being held accountable. He is a wealthy man who will try to be desperate to avoid facing justice, implying that there may have been already verifiable instances of John Griffin trying to bribe anyone in his path to lessen the impact of his consequences. In fact, it is documented that John Griffin did, in fact, talk to one of the family members of the nine-year-old girl and Heather Lynn character, the mother, where he tried to bribe this family member saying, quote, you let me know if you're feeling helpful within an hour or so. And a short time later, he sent that relative $4,000 via Venmo. There was a 17 month delay before CNN producer John Griffin was arrested for his child sex crimes. 17 months. A former decorated FBI agent of 25 years, Jane Turner, had some scathing criticism about the three-letter agency for their perceived delay. She griped to Fox News that the federal agency, quote, doesn't give a damn about these kind of cases. Her scorch earth commentary continued as she commented on Fox News, quote, he obviously is a sexual predator and has gone from grooming children into actually capturing them. Very, very dangerous offender. Jane Turner ran highly successful programs which fought against child sex crimes and crimes against women. She was removed from her senior position at the agency after she exposed the FBI failures within its child crime program, but later challenged her removal in federal court and won the largest compensatory damage award permitted under the law for federal employees. The allegations and evidence collected against CNN's John Griffin with the initial search warrant should have triggered an immediate investigation by top FBI agents, Turner believed. And she said to Fox News, the reason it wasn't probably was due to something called the yuck factor. This is what she explains that to be. 
they should have kicked this up to a team put a lot of time and resources on it but as we all know anything to do with sex and kids holds a yuck factor for a lot of agents and their supervisors jane turner did tell fox news that the agency could have given some pretty viable excuses for the 17 month delay before John Griffin's arrest, including the crime lab being backed up, uncooperative witnesses, and the possibility of attempting to build the case against other suspects. But Turner believes that it comes down to something more problematic. Quote from her, the bottom line is they, the FBI, really don't give a damn about these kind of cases, she said. I mean, I don't know. Could the 17 month delay been because of a backlog in work or uncooperative witnesses and this and that of the latter? I just have so many questions after details provided such as his money. Like why was John Griffin so wealthy? Was he earning money by other methods? Was he born with a silver spoon in his mouth? Check this out. Griffin is the son of longtime William Morris agent Jim Griffin, who represented Regis Philbin, Geraldo Rivera, Fred Thompson, amongst others. He left the agency in 2009 for Paradigm before it merged with Endeavor. However, back in the day, one of Jim Griffin's clients was a young Chris Cuomo. Jim's son, John, joined Cuomo on CNN's New Day from the show's birth in 2013 and stuck with the recently axed anchor until the launch of Cuomo Primetime in 2018. Chris Cuomo had previously worked with John Griffin at ABC News between 2005 and 2013. And just to add a little bit more seasoning to this scandal gumbo, remember Chris Cuomo was ultimately fired for taking up for his brother, Governor Andrew Cuomo, when he got caught up in a sexual harassment scandal. And to nobody's surprise, CNN didn't really have much to say about this situation. And you would think that you would want to put out like a very lengthy concerning statement about the public's well-being, the well-being of children and how you will strive as a media agency to continue to look out for the well-being of children and to be concerned for those things. Oh, no. CNN simply had one quote that I could find and they might have other quotes around that that time but there weren't very many is my point and they said prior to his arrest being John Griffin their producer prior to his arrest and indictment we had no knowledge about the case this next little statement sent shivers down my spine because what the heck okay it says right here the media outlet it being CNN also said no CNN owned devices issued to Griffin were seized when police served a search warrant on his electronics in September of 2020. Why? I have no idea. Okay. I would think, I would think that if you were looking into a dangerous child predator, you would want to seize every single bit of electronic components or anything that you owned, whether or not they were issued from a mega media agency such as CNN or if they were personal, okay? I looked at um, some some legal documentation in regards to the case and I saw a lot of personal items, you know, his phone, his drone, his, you know, personal assets that were seized, right? Um, but it did not mention anything issued by CNN. And my big question is why and how? Okay, how is it that the three letter agency just avoided, okay, take everything but the CNN equipment, right? I don't know. And I don't know the logistics behind that either. It could be that he had all of his equipment at the CNN studio, right? And he never did take it home to, you know, even be within distance or remotely close to anything egregious that he was doing. I have no clue. But it's just that statement was just interesting to me. So how deep this rabbit hole goes, I don't even know. OK, you guys have a quick idea of how under the table transactions happen with state funded media. You get a quick idea, right? All the political connections between the narrative and the broadcast. It just makes me wonder how much that was part of this whole ordeal. 
17 months is a long time to wait to let a predator who is actively, you know, pursuing children out on the hook and, and, and being able to do whatever he wanted. Right. And I know that the wheels of the justice system turn slowly, but you would have to agree with Jane Turner, who was a former, formerly really decorated FBI agent who had a lot of heavy criticism about this particular matter. They should have arrested him and they should have had their top A game on this immediately. But with that, John Griffin was able to do whatever he wanted for a full 17 months. So what this case really illustrated for me is the quiet illustrative connections that seem to play a part in this. And that's just my personal opinion. That's my personal observation, right? Obviously, CNN is not everybody's favorite publication, everybody's favorite news, right? It does seem to be, and this, again, just my personal observation, just my opinion, does seem to be that they are highly connected to the bigger, you know, talking mouths, the bigger entities, if you will, that, uh, that give them their talking points and give them the next story and the next narratives, right? It does seem to be that they have something bigger at hand that is not not generically in the public's interest, but in the interest of the bigger people, right? And so it just makes me wonder how much this plays out in a bird's eye view. Are they so connected and paid under the table that even their you know, a uh, six figure or what what's supposed to be a six figure paying job as a producer, as a senior producer, actually might get more in maybe doing more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it just freaks me out that some of the parts of the story just went so under the radar. It's so quiet. And it, again, just shows you how your local governments, your local judges can do some quiet things like this. For instance, the mother not being, you know, openly sentenced to, to the point where the public can report on it, right? What's up with that? Who did that? What judge secretly gave her that sentence and such a light sentence and why, you know, it's just so strange to me. So anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for, uh, helping me and 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 sharing this with your groups and your Facebook groups and your group chats and all these things. I need your help. And uh, I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.